at 9.30pm GMT, possibly slightly earlier depending on how recording goes beforehand. I shall be streaming over on the Omegon Plays channel and of course on my Omegon Twitch channel. I will be streaming more Euro Truck Simulator 2 with that awesome steering wheel. Please feel free to drop by either on Twitch or of course on the channel, YouTube channel that is, link to both below. It is a World of Trucks event, so I'm going to be trying to complete as much of that as possible and then finishing it on Friday. Now before we get into the subject of what I intend to cover, which is censorship related, I thought I'd just tell people after reading the comments from yesterday's video, I don't understand democracy, and I don't know how it works, and I'm just a right winger. <sighs> Fuck's sake. Ah, uh, I can feel the aneurysm. Now the subject is censorship. I think we all have a strong opinion on it. I personally do not agree with censorship. I do agree that there are terms of service. I do believe in people's right to say whatever they want. You could argue that means absolutist. I'm not sure if it qualifies, but I do think everyone should have the right to say what they want. Whether a privately owned company, some maybe publicly, depends on the company in question, have terms of service, and they exist because they themselves want to ensure they are protected as best they can. Of course, they have legal teams that ensure it from anyone that might try and sue them for what someone does on their site. Guilt by association is, of course, 100% foolproof, everyone. <coughs> Guaranteed win and conviction total. Like, yeah. So my view on free speech is almost absolutist, I think. In fact, it might just be that. When it comes to censorship, though, there are certain companies that, of course, take a stance, as I mentioned. But now we know other countries do. We have Articles 11 and 13 coming into effect soon that could effectively ruin YouTube for European users. This is a huge concern, certainly for someone like me, where I am now put in a position where I may not be able to link to articles that I cover. I will instead have to, and I'm going to call it this, paint a picture and hope that you take my word for it, where I could at best link to a paste bin maybe, or to an archive link, perhaps. I guess it all comes down to how I am able to get around it so I don't get hit with a tax for something that should not be taxed. When someone provides a link to an article or back to the original video, do you remember the response videos? People did it because they knew it would also drum up additional traffic for those who were inquisitive enough to get the full context, either of the article or of the video. In fact, a number of people who had response videos done to them, many response videos done to them, didn't mind because the additional traffic meant cha-ching, more AdSense, back when AdSense was a thing. We're not all PewDiePie and totally not in it for the money, so we litter our videos with 7 to 8 ads for every 10 to 15 minute video we do. Or has he reduced that by now? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. The countries in question we're going to focus on are Australia and New Zealand, where a number of internet service providers have started censoring the internet with little to no legal precedent. Oh, and to go back to Articles 11 and 13, yeah, my way around it, I'm just going to talk, which I firmly believe the majority of you would prefer anyway, as it is what I already do in the first place, since I don't do response videos anymore. This might get a little trickier with the Nico Cardo avocado video and the part 2 to Foodie Beauty, but we will see how that goes, as they are in North America. Good luck trying to tax me on that. E. So the internet service providers have started banning a number of websites, including Vote, Zero Hedge, Archive.is, which I use, LiveLeak, and I know this for a fact because I saw the tweet, BitChute, which I actually knew about, not from BitChute's tweet, but because somebody mentioned it in my video where I talked about having a BitChute channel. So I already knew about it because people are already being banned from accessing websites, which is a tad over-controlling of the ISPs to block these sites for reasons that I'm sure are beyond our understanding, Telstra being the biggest and most well-known to have censored these sites. Of course, as many of you would say, there is a way around it, and you are quite right. There is, of course there is. But as I'm not sponsored by one, I'm not going to play one of Bearing's ads. Just to give a quick rundown of what each of those sites does that's been banned, Vote is a community platform where there is no censorship. It's basically a site with free speech. That's it and it was created in 2014. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but I figured the Cliff's Notes version will suffice. Zero Hedge 
is being described as a markets-focused blog that presents both in-house analysis and analysis from investment banks, hedge funds, and other investment writers and analysts, which was launched back in 2009. Archive.is, which I use, is a way of ensuring things that are on the internet stay on the internet. You go to their site, you put in the web address or the link to a tweet, and you archive it. That's it. It is there in perpetuity, ensuring that people who say stupid shit can't just delete it. It's a great way of ensuring that articles aren't tampered with, because that happens on a regular basis. It is a fantastic way of ensuring what you have done is correct, or what you are citing is correct. In fact, going forward, I will from this day on be archiving all my sources. How I present that to you in the description, we'll see how Articles 11 and 13 affect us. Because in theory, if we leave, it won't. But we will certainly see anyway. I am not one to rush. Still got three days left, really. LiveLeak was founded in 2006 and is a video sharing website. I don't use it myself, but that's what it is. Oh, and finally, BitChute. BitChute is an alternative platform to YouTube. It does have a reward system, which I would desperately love to have. Please subscribe to me on BitChute, I would love that. It is growing, I'm verified on there, woot. And it's a fantastic way of uploading videos and not having to have dedicated servers in one location, instead using torrents, which is genius. It is funded differently to how it was originally through PayPal, but that's not surprising. While we would love nothing more than to have alternative media, we're going to take away any possible way for them to get money conventionally. Hmm. Doesn't sound like a monopoly at all, does it? Hmm. In a statement that was given by Telstra, they did say we appreciate that it is necessary to ensure free speech is carefully balanced against protecting the community. But with these sites continuing to host disturbing content, we feel it is the right thing to do to block them. Hosting disturbing content is a fairly nebulous term. I don't entirely know what falls under the bracket of disturbing. You would have to be very specific. And how the fuck did Zero Hedge qualify? It's financial. I kind of get it with BitChute because there are a number of right-leaning content creators that are on BitChute, and that's bad because right means racist and left means soy. You're both terrible, terrible. You should be ashamed of yourself. In New Zealand, Mobile internet service providers have taken it upon themselves to enact censorship, where Spark New Zealand, Vodafone New Zealand, Vocus New Zealand have taken it upon themselves to block the earlier mentioned sites, claiming that these are only temporary blocks that have lasted multiple days and more than long enough to change people's browsing habits, where even the perpetrator of the censorship are aware of how unprecedented it is where they have been quoted as saying, Jeff Thorne, the chief executive of New Zealand Telecommunications Forum, said, This is an unprecedented move by the telecommunications industry, but one that we all agree is necessary. If you deny someone the right to access something, let's use an equivalence. Knife crime in the UK. To tackle it, we'll just ban the knives even more. Because that totally works. And much like the internet, if you try and clamp down on the internet, what are they going to do? That's right. They're going to be drawn towards it like moths to a light bulb. So in what universe are you actually achieving anything that isn't utterly pathetic? People should have the right to access whatever site they want. You are not the arbiters or the ones that conduct a purity test to ascertain which sites are worthy of your service or to be used on your service. This isn't a way of insulating yourself, like I earlier mentioned, from repercussions from people using that site and saying things that are in of itself wrong, like with Gab. A number of very extreme people have been on their site and, of course, conducted rather stupid acts in their names. Not in the names of the site, but their own individual names. But as Gab worked with relevant authorities the moment it happened and condemned it, you can't really fault them. But that's not how everyone else viewed it, is it? It's a case of, well, this is where the extremists are actually going, so we should shut it down the goyim. No. I also noticed my friend Adam Friended on Twitter. He put a video up and it referenced how Jordan Peterson's book has been banned by one of the major distributors in New Zealand, which is Whitcools. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but I'm going to link Adam's video below. He does some amazing content and has, I would argue, a far sexier voice. Seriously, I would make love to his voice. What with the pull, sway that Jordan Peterson has, 
Censoring him is not the wise thing to do. The guy has already got enough clout as it is. You saw the damage he did to Patreon when he took his self off the site. That's a lot of money to take away from their pockets. I hope the hit was worth it Patreon, who also conducted purity tests on people because of the content they make or may not make or may have said somewhere else for stuff that wasn't even added to their site. Cough, cough, the Sargon shit all over again. Seriously, grow the fuck up. As far as I'm concerned, yes, there are terms of service with each individual site and, of course, provider, but I disagree with no legitimate reason being given as to why those sites are being banned. I would argue they're doing it only because of isolated incidents that have involved each individual site, although Archive makes no sense at all. Really, no sense at all. If we're going to play that game, we should ban YouTube for Elliot Rogers. We should ban Facebook because, well, seriously, it's Facebook. We should ban it in the UK for Cambridge Analytica. We should ban Twitter for the numerous amounts of people who have intentionally called for the death of someone just cause. I think we should all just go back to MySpace and Bebo at this point, because at least Tom didn't unfriend us. Tom was loyal, yeah. <sighs> Sigh. I am going to go and sleep. I am so damn tired. My apologies if I seem irritated or testy, but quite frankly I don't stand in favour of any kind of censorship. People should be allowed to say whatever they want, and then it should be up to the court of public opinion if it stacks up, and if they are summarily rejected, let the people reject them. The company shouldn't take it upon themselves to just ban someone cause. Although, if it's in the terms of service, I can understand why they would remove them. But we all agree to the terms of service. With the lack of legal precedent in all of this, one would argue there is no actual terms of service that says, we're going to ban you from accessing certain sites, unless you're in China, of course. Or Pakistan, where you can only say nice things about faith, one faith. If you don't, bad. And Facebook agree with this shit. Anyway, if I don't see you later tonight over on Twitch or the Omega on Plays channel, I hope you all have a lovely Tuesday, and thank you all for listening. Oh, not done. I promised I'd do this for Shivy Pop. I'm going to read a tweet, no context at all, just going to read a tweet that I promised I'd record and insert into a video. Not going to lie. I'm intrigued to see who holds the hose and who lifts up your knockers. Have a lovely day, everyone.